Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about kombucha. Kombucha is a fermented tea beverage that's made from sweet tea and these starter cultures that I'll explain in a little bit. It's become really popular in the past I would say five or so years I started drinking it in high school and when I first tried kombucha I was like this is gross I thought it was so nasty but I have a lot of stomach issues and one of the main benefits of drinking kombucha is that it has probiotics which are good for your gut and intestinal health so I kind of just kept forcing myself to drink it even though I wasn't crazy about the taste and then eventually I grew to tolerate it and then eventually I grew to absolutely love it so I think it is an acquired taste and a lot of people do not like it the first time they try it if you've tried kombucha before and hated it I don't blame you it is a very strong flavor but I think over time you can experiment with the different flavors that the stores have to offer or I'm going to be teaching you how I make my own and flavor it myself so when you make your own kombucha you have a lot more control over the ingredients that go into it so having that control gives you a sense of customization and personalization so you can make your kombucha true to whatever you want to be drinking so kombucha has been around for a very long time they say that it originated in china around 220 bc which is so long ago and it's crazy to think that these same cultures have been passed down for centuries. Kombucha only started being in mainstream culture probably about f maybe five years ago. So before that, it was all smaller health gurus and people who are really good at traditional Chinese medicine passing down these cultures for generations, which is just crazy to think about. So why has it been passed down for so long? Like what is kombucha? What makes it so amazing? So First of all, let me tell you what a SCOBY is. A SCOBY is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. It looks like this little clear to white to brownish disc, kind of like a hockey puck sort of shape, but it will fill the shape of whatever jar you're using to brew your kombucha. And it is bacteria and yeast living in this one colony and it's called a SCOBY. So in order to make your own kombucha, you're going to need to obtain a SCOBY. So you can do this a few ways. One, you can buy them online and it is probably the easiest method, but people will sell them for kind of a crazy amount I've seen before. And the other two ways are a lot easier. So you can also get it from a friend. So someone like me who has brewed kombucha for a while and has healthy scobies ready to just give away, or you can grow it yourself, which is what I did. In order to grow my scoby, I went to, I think Walmart, and I got a bottle of GT's raw kombucha. So the starter culture that I used comes from GT's kombucha. So each kombucha company has their own strains of kombucha that they use, but in order to grow your own, you need to get raw unflavored kombucha, and then you're gonna dump it into a jar, put some sort of paper towel or cloth on top of it so that air can get through but bugs can't and you're gonna let it sit for like a month in kind of just in a warm sunny place and after a couple weeks you'll start to notice that a little thin disc is gonna start to grow on the top layer and you don't want to disturb this disc just let it chill out do its thing and eventually it'll get bigger and then once it's probably about half an inch thick you'll be ready to start making your kombucha so now once you have your scoby you also should have a little bit of starter liquid which is just the tea that's left over in kombucha brewing you should also know that there are kind of two processes of fermentation now the first is necessary the second is optional but the first one is when it's going to go through aerobic respiration so for the In the first fermentation process, you're going to have some sweet tea. You can use black or green tea. I always choose to use green tea. It's just personal preference of taste, but I use sweet green tea and then I'll add in my starter liquid and my SCOBY. Now you wanna make sure that the tea is completely cooled to room temperature before you do this, because if it's too hot, you can kill the SCOBY, which is not what we want. So after that's all set, you're going to put a cloth or a paper towel on top of it, just like we did when you were growing the scoby, 
and you're gonna have to let that sit for a certain amount of time. Now that time depends on what environment the SCOBY is gonna be in, if it's too hot or too cold. If it's warm, usually it takes a quicker time to ferment, and then if it's cooler, it might take a very long time. You also wanna make sure that it's not too cold or too hot, and I like to keep mine in a range of like 65 to 75 degrees. If it gets hotter than I believe 98, it will kill the SCOBY, and if it gets lower than like 62 or something, you will send it into dormancy, which is also not something that you wanna do. So at the end of first fermentation, and you'll know it's the end because you can kind of just give it little taste tests to see if it's at the sweetness or the sourness that you want, you will have raw, unflavored kombucha. Now you can drink it this way, and that's totally fine, but if you want to add the fun flavors to your kombucha, you're gonna have to go through the second fermentation process. My favorite process is the second fermentation because you get to have so much fun with it and experiment with all the different things you can add. You're going to need to have some really tight sealed bottles. So you can use any type of swing top bottles. You can find them on Amazon or even at TJ Maxx sometimes will have them. And you need to make sure that they have a really tight seal. So what you're going to do is add that liquid that you've just brewed in the first fermentation into the bottles and you can leave some room at the top and this is where you're gonna add any fresh fruit or any fruit juices, They not from concentrate because those have a different chemical structure. My personal favorite flavor that I've ever made was this strawberry flavor that I made over the summer and when it was done fermenting, it tasted like candy. It was so delicious and I haven't made it since but I really want to because that was my favorite one ever. And you can also add in different herbs like rosemary and thyme to give it an extra depth. And I've talked about spices a lot in my other video. They have a lot of nutritional properties as well. Once you seal up that kombucha into your bottle with whatever extra sugar you added to ferment, it's going to convert it into carbon dioxide. So if you've ever had kombucha from the store, you'll know that it's very, very fizzy and sometimes it has a tendency to explode. This is because when it creates this carbon dioxide naturally, it's adding all this pressure to the inside of the bottle and the carbon dioxide is dissolving into the liquid. So even though you might not see it, you have to be very careful when opening these bottles after three or four days because I've had a couple explode on me and it is not fun. So when you're doing the second fermentation and you're letting them sit for around two to four days, you're going to want to have them in a dark, cooler place than the way that they were originally fermenting because when you're doing the first fermentation and second fermentation, they're different biological processes. So the first one was aerobic, which means that there was oxygen involved. And the second process is anaerobic, which is where there's no oxygen involved and they're creating this carbon dioxide naturally instead of having it added in at a factory like they do with regular soda. So when you have this natural carbonation process, it needs to take place kind of with minimal sunlight. So I usually keep mine under my desk at school or in a dark cabinet that's not too warm. And this way you'll ensure that the process is going smoothly and you can kind of control the temperature that your brew is taking place in. Then once you're done and you feel like your bottles are ready to be carbonated, you can take them out and I would recommend opening them over a sink just in case they explode on you. Some people who brew kombucha like to burp the bottles, which is when probably like once or twice a day you'll go in and you just flip open the cap so you let any excess carbon dioxide escape. But I found that this leads to less fizzy kombucha and I liked mine to be really fizzy. So I don't do this. I'd rather take the risk of it exploding than to lose the quality of the product. But it's so much fun when you get to have the most amazing flavors that you created yourself and then you can go and let your whole family try it. And they might be a little scared at first because sometimes little baby scobies will form in your second fermentation bottles. So you might have like these little globs of scoby. Don't be afraid by them. You can drink them and ingest them. I choose not to. I usually strain mine out in a little tea strainer and then I strain it into like a glass that I drink it out of. But a lot of people do eat them and like them and People do all crazy things with scobies. I know they put them in dehydrators and eat them like fruit leather and there's a million things you could do with a scoby. 
I kind of just hold on to mine in a Scooby hotel where they all live in this one jar. And if I ever need them, I just take them out. But you can have a lot of fun with the Scobies as well. So the kombucha, every time you make a new batch, you get a new Scoby out of it. So your Scobies will multiply pretty quickly, which is why it's always good to hand them off to a friend who wants to try making kombucha, or you can just do one of those fun things with it. <laughs> now the kombucha making process that I've described in this whole video is called batch brewing. So you're going to be brewing it in these little glass batch jars, which gives you more control over the flavors and the level of acidity that you're creating. What I've been doing the past couple months is continuous brew. I have one large pitcher of kombucha and my scoby is probably this big right now it's pretty huge and it's very thick as well and you have to keep consistently feeding it with sugar tea to let it keep fermenting as you go which is why it's called continuous because you basically have raw kombucha right on top and i would recommend this method for anybody who drinks a lot of kombucha or if you have family members always trying to hijack your kombucha or if you prefer the raw taste because then you're not trying to really control anything you can just let it ferment how it goes there are some pros and cons with each method right now I'm trying out the continuous brew I might switch back to batch brew because I'm kind of lazy and don't really feel like feeding it sugar tea all the time especially when I'm at college but I've been making a lot of fun flavors this winter such as pomegranate ginger strawberry lemonade and a little like pineapple cinnamon mixture that was really good as well so that is it for today I hope that you liked my little kombucha 101 tutorial. If you have any questions about making kombucha or want to learn more, I will include some links in the description box to other YouTube videos and some websites that I used when I first started making kombucha. And please leave in the comments if you have any questions for me or if you live nearby, if you're one of my friends and you want some scoby, I have plenty. So I would be more than happy to share the kombucha making process with you. And other than that, I hope that you found this video really informative. And if you've never had a bottle of kombucha, I strongly encourage you to go out to the store and try it because it's delicious and I believe that it really is good for you and that it's helped my stomach a lot over the years. Please let me know what you think and don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any more of my healthy lifestyle tips. Love you. Bye.